right, so the title is obviously Private Isn't Private. Let's go in our Bibles to Ephesians 5. I'm going to look at these verses again. We're just going to recap really quick, and I'm going to endeavor to get through, um, you know, a couple of these. I don't want to keep y'all all night. Um, not for the sake of dragging it out, but just so we receive everything that the Holy Spirit wanted us to get out of this series. <laughs> this message, it's turned into a series. It's not going to be like the letters, though. <laughs> Four years later. <laughs> private still isn't private. 2024. Just kidding. Um, private isn't private. Ephesians 5, 8 through 13. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, wake out of your sleep and arise from the dead. Christ shall give you light. So we're talking tonight again about the fact that whatever I do in private is translated publicly. And sometimes, just like the um, awkward puppet video, sometimes we wish the translation wasn't as clear. We would hope that what I did in private wouldn't actually show up in public, but it's going to be translated. Everywhere you go, there are two forces. There's light and darkness. So there's spirit and there's flesh. And so I have to realize that when I'm in my room, there's a spirit of darkness and there's a spirit of light. And whichever one I yield to, that's going to be what is translated publicly. You can't put on, you can't fake um, out of what you have sown privately. And so just like in a car, there's two types of fuel, right? Diesel and gas. Now, if you have a gas car, what kind of fuel goes in that? Gas. Y'all are so smart. Wow. If you put diesel in a gas car, what happens? It stops working. I'm asking. I'm literally asking what actually stops. It stalls out. It won't work, whatever. What happens if you put gas in a diesel? It won't work either. Either way, they don't work. So as believers, we are created in the image of God. We were created to live in the spirit, to live based on the spirit. So every time we yield to the flesh privately, we're yielding to something that is literally going to halt and stop our entire life. Now, as we yield to the spirit, just like whenever you put gas in your car, what are the different levels of gas? Do y'all know? 90, 98, but the three buttons that are just right there. They say regular unled super unleaded plus so the higher i'm like wow 98 99 100 what are the words there's like words that are like so the highest word not the numbers guys is what super unleaded now the super unleaded what's the difference between it and the regular unleaded it's more expensive. It costs more. See, in the private moments of my life, we want to yield to the Spirit, but we want to begin to yield at a higher level. So as we go, and what does that require? Just like the gas, the premium soup or whatever, costs more. Well, it costs more. As you move along in your relationship with God, if you want to continue moving on instead of just staying at the regular, yes, I yield to the Spirit, yeah, I read my Bible. Well, if you want to really begin to see the benefits, the blessing, the manifestation of the life of God in your life, it's going to cost more. So you might not be able to watch the same things that you used to watch. Even this month, there may be things that you cut out in private that like aren't necessarily bad, but it's just like, and so it's going to cost you more. They may, there may be more time spent on your knees. There may be more time studying, whatever it is. The better gas just costs more. And not that the, the spirit is better, but you manifesting the spirit is better. It's just like you're more yielded. So what I do in private isn't private. It's translated publicly no matter what. So we began to look at, and if you're first here, we started looking at, and I'll just give you the scripture references. We started looking at lust, and so you just draw the little line like in school. Lust in private translates as loss in public. Lust in private 
translates as loss. Well, what is that loss of? Um, we saw this in the life of David. He lost his, um, his newborn child. He also lost um, his family, really. One of his sons raped his daughter. He lost um, another son that came after his throne. There was just a lot of loss in his life, all because there was lust in his life privately. Well, I've had lust in my life. Will you get rid of it now? And you believe God for a crop failure of every seed that you've sown. Like, make an adjustment now. And just like I said last week even, loss um, usually translates as very manipulative, just like how David was. He tried to manipulate Uriah. So those verses were found in 2 Samuel 18. You could just write those down in the lines. And then obviously Samson, he had lust. It showed up in loss, loss of your vision. When there's lust privately, there's no vision publicly. So loss of friendship, loss of relationships. You can write these things underneath loss on the right side. Loss of friendships, loss of relationships, loss of vision, loss of harvest, loss of strength. And this doesn't have to be just like I said, porn, masturbation, having sex. This could be even just lusting, fantasizing in your mind. Fantasizing about having a relationship. Fantasizing about what it will be like when. That's still lust. Desiring something that you do not have. Or it's not the season or the time. That's lust. The second one we talked about last week is greed. Greed in private translates as no endurance. You're just flighty. When people are greedy, they're just all over the place. Well, why? Because they're... Mind's on the money. Got my mind on my money, on my money, on my mind. You know, like, what's her name? I don't even know. If, is it Cardi B? I'm making money moves, right? You're just like, yeah, you're making money moves, and you're all over the place. You know what I mean? And God's just like, hey, I had a blessing for you there. Well, I only get paid this much an hour, but I had a blessing for you there. And because you were so greedy, you didn't just stay there and continue to sow and do it. You know, you just were all over the place grabbing for money. And so whenever you're greedy privately... It translates to no endurance. So that was found in Matthew 27, verses 3 through 5, just in the life of Judas. We saw that. He was stealing. He was talking mess about the woman and what, what we did with the perfume that could have been sold to feed the poor. Okay, bro, you weren't going to feed the poor. You wanted extra money to take out of the money bag. So everything I do in private is translated publicly. And so I just want us to watch, just to like be able to laugh, because I was laughing hysterically before, another one of our awkward puppets, where this, you know, it was just like a little bit confusing. You know what I mean? It was just a little bit confusing. Can we just play that clip? Customer service. Hola. Hi, yes, this is customer service. Hola. Yes, hi. Hola. How can I help you today, ma'am? My TV no work. Oh, okay. What seems to be the problem? My TV? Yeah, I know, but... It no work. Is it turning on? Si. Sí. Can you change the channels? Si. Sí. Can you hear the audio? Si. Sí. Okay. Um, what seems to be the problem, ma'am? Everybody speak English. Sorry, everyone... Everybody speaks English? Si. Sí. And you're having a hard time understanding them? Si. Sí. Ma'am, it sounds like your TV's working just fine. You just want to change the language setting. I watch movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, but I cannot understand what he say. Yeah, I understand, ma'am. As I said, you can just switch the language to Spanish. Me no speak Spanish. You don't? No. But you said hola and si. I just want to watch my movies in my language. Oh, okay, well, that sounds a lot like Spanish, ma'am. My TV no work. Ma'am, what language would you like to set it to? Espanol, por favor. <sighs> Okay, ma'am. Uh, well, can I have your name so I can look up your account, please? Maria. M as in Maria. A as in Aria. R as in Ria. I as in Ia. And A as in Avocado. Maria. Got it. Last name? Maria. Your last name is also Maria? Si. Sí, Maria. M as in my son, Mario. A as in my son, Alejandro. R as in my son, Raimundo. I as in my son, Ignacio. And A as in Abraham Lincoln. Okay, middle name? Maria. Your middle name is also Maria. Si, Maria. M as in my name is Maria. 
A as in all of my sisters are also Maria. R as in ready or not, here comes Maria. I as in I am Maria. And A as in are you going to help Maria with her TV? So your full name is Maria, Maria, Maria. My parents are not very creative. Ma'am, I'm not seeing your name in the system. You, you sure you have an account with us? I googled my TV no work and this number come up. Hmm, okay. I, th I, think, well, I think you may have called the wrong company, ma'am. What's the brand name on your TV? Where I find this? Well, it should be on the bottom or the top. Is it like Sony, Samsung, LG? Do you see something like that? Oh, I find. Okay, great. What does it say? Maria. That is so funny to me. <laughs> Y'all, it was just like something's getting lost in translation. Do you know what I mean? But guess what? What I do privately, it won't get lost in translation. It's going to show up in my life. And that should be exciting to us, especially because we're endeavoring to live our life in a way that brings glory and honor to God no matter where we are, yielding to the Spirit. It should be exciting that things are being translated right. So we're going to look at these things that aren't as exciting, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like things that we have to work out of our life. But the next one is fear. Fear in private translates to frustration publicly. <laughs> Are you going to help Maria with the TV? Oh my gosh, like it's so freaking hilarious. Fear privately translates to frustration publicly. Let's look at Matthew 26, 35. You can go there in your Bible. And also right next to frustration, expectation in the wrong place. Fear privately produces frustration publicly and expectation in the wrong place publicly. Matthew 26. Who I am private will be translated publicly. I'm either yielding to the spirit or the flesh, light or darkness. There's no gray. Matthew 26, 35. So we're looking at um, Peter, and obviously Peter said unto Jesus... If I should die with you, I will not deny you. Likewise also said his disciples. So Peter said, even if I have to die, I will not deny you. So Peter obviously had some fear. He, he was fearful that Jesus was going to die. And then he, was, he said, I'm going to die with you. And Jesus said, no, you'll actually deny me. And so then he said it again, like, so you can tell Peter is like dealing with this, like this is fear, like, oh crap, I just said I was going to die, and he said I wasn't going to die, so now there's fear involved. So this fear, look how it translated in John 18. So what was he fearful of? Fearful of not being enough for Jesus. We could have fear of man, we could have fear of failing. We could have a fear of missing out, you know, that whole FOMO, whatever thing. Well, fear privately translates to publicly being frustrated and publicly putting your expectation in the wrong things. And you'll always be disappointed. Whenever you live in fear privately, there's always disappointment. It's like you never, Chav, good job with the beard. I wanted everyone to acknowledge your beard when you came in. Thank you for growing a beard this past week. We'll zoom in on your beard later, okay, if we have time. Um, but you can have fear. Like, Peter obviously had fear that he wasn't going to be enough. Now, he could have, he should have just received what Jesus said. No, you're actually going to deny me. He could have said, okay, Jesus, I don't want to deny you. That's not what I want to do. What do I need to do? <laughs> Show me what to do. But fear, whenever fear is private and you don't just like, voice and say what you need to say or have a conversation to deal with things, it turns into frustration and then it turns into the wrong expectation. So in John 18, it says in verse 10, 10 and 11, then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. 
So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given to me? Yielding to fear privately is really just you trying to figure out things on your own instead of praying in the Holy Spirit and spending time with the Father. And fear private always makes you look foolish publicly. Like, why are you so mad? Why are you so frustrated? Well, there's a fear. There's a fear private that you haven't taken to the Father. You haven't allowed, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 8, that the love of God drives away fear. Perfect love casts out fear. And so whenever you yield to fear, fear of not being good enough, fear of failure, fear of not, um, you know, becoming what you have an expectation of yourself, whatever it is, any fear you yield to privately shows up publicly. So you're just frustrated. You're annoyed with people. You have expectations. So you, you take on rejection very quickly because you have an expectation in someone to do something for you or make you feel better. And so fear privately shows up in these things just like it did for Peter. How do I know Peter was in fear? Is because he got super frustrated. He got frustrated with the soldiers and he cut off one of their ears. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it's just sloppy. Yeah. Fear makes your life sloppy. It makes you sloppy. And so fear in private will be translated. And so you have to address fear. You have to address it. Well, how do I address it? The Bible says perfect love casts out fear. So you have to spend time with love. God is love. 1 John 4, 8, I believe, right? Is 4, 18 perfect love casts out fear? People help the people, folks. Okay, 1 John 4, 18 is perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 4, 8 is what? God is love. Yeah. <laughs> So I just spend time with God. Well, I just don't know how to do that. What does that look like? Well, God is his word. You spend time with God and his word. Well, I've just, I've just been battling this fear and it hasn't gone away. Okay, well, then you get somebody in the ring with you. Like Jesus was basically telling Peter, hey, you're not going to do that. You're going to deny me. That was a prime opportunity for Peter to say, okay, well, what do I do? What do you want me to do? You know what I mean? Like clearly you're going to die. I don't want to deny you. What do I need to do? But instead of doing that, what happened? He allowed fear, frustration came, expectation, and then Peter went back to fishing. Like he went back to his old life. Fear privately will be translated publicly, and y'all, you'll find yourself not in the will of God. All because of fear. Y'all, fear is, is nothing. Do you understand? Fear is like, it, it holds nothing. It hold, like it's literally like nine times out of ten, fear is a result of a story you make up in your own head. Like there's no weight to it. There's no substance to it. Do you understand? Or fear is just um, something that the enemy uses based on a previous event that like you're not even close to that anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's like it takes you back to this unsafe place when you're safe. It takes you back to this dark place when you're in the light. Fear is just, is it fear is a liar? Is that what, or is that the devil is a liar? Colton. Devil is a liar. Hey. But like fear cannot, cannot hurt a believer whenever fear is addressed. When fear is just like, no, that, God has not given me a spirit of fear, power, love, and a sound mind. And so, but I can't just like privately be in fear and expect it not to show up publicly. If you walk around in your job and you're frustrated, if you walk around in your job and you have expectation on other people instead of expectation in God, you have to know you've yielded to fear privately. And you just have to ask the Father, where have I yielded? Well, I've been fearful about not, not making enough money. I've been fearful about, you know, failing somebody. I've been fearful, whatever the fear is. And then you address it and you make a change. You have to reject fear because it'll show up. And what is the purpose of being frustrated? Y'all, Jesus wasn't frustrated. Do you know what I mean? Like it just, it puts off this very like get away from me vibe. And you don't want to do that. And fear is just like, it's so demonic. And so you have to address it because fear private will be translated. And then your, your life just looks foolish. And then you're not even around anymore. And it's not because of anybody else. Do you know what I mean? Like Jesus told them what was going to happen. You'll have pastors that tell you us, it's not their fault that you booked it. It's because privately you didn't address it. You didn't address any fear. So the next one, compromise. Compromise in private 
leads or is translated as being casual or put next to it, charismatic. Compromise in private will cause you to be casual and put next to it or charismatic. You'll be either one or two of the, of the spectrums. Because people that are steady, like that are steady, driven, doing what they know to do, they're not compromising privately. But people that compromise privately, it'll either come through your personality as being casual or being charismatic. And both are ugly. I mean, charismatic is louder, but casual is just as loud. You're blessed. You're blessed. So let's go in our Bibles to 1 Samuel 13. This is a story of Saul. Actually, go first to James 4.17. I apologize. Because I'm going to show you 1 Samuel. Let's go to James. What is compromise? Who can tell me their definition of compromise? Doing what you know not to do. That's good. Anybody else? Settling for something less. That's good. Doing things halfway right. Happy medium. Yeah, like meet in the middle. Compromise. Yep. Anybody else? Going against your standards. Janaya? Naya? Crossing boundaries that you set for yourself. That's so good. This is compromise. Notice that none of you said, like, murder. You know what I mean? I mean, if you have a problem with killing people, please stay after. I'm going to cast the devil out of you. But notice that it wasn't like, a, not like a major sin is sin. But it's just like, this is who you've decided that you're going to be. Who, as your life has met the word of God, as you've spent time in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit, this is the standard that you've set for your life based on the word of God. Compromise is going against that not sticking to it and compromise privately. Remember, wherever you are, you're not alone. There's the spirit of darkness and there's the spirit of light. And so the spirit of darkness is there for waiting for any open door. Love is an open door, right? Whatever compromise opens the door and then the darkness comes in. And just like the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the spirit of darkness, the spirit of light, not to be like creepy, but they're like waiting to pick up on whatever door you open for them. And so whenever you open the door to light, obviously the entrance of light provides even more light. And then it makes way for you to go from level from faith to faith glory to glory like higher and higher and higher but as you yield to the spirit of darkness privately the enemy uses that publicly because y'all he doesn't want to just take you out like he wants to take you out but you have to know that whenever he takes you out it's not just you it's never just you that's why like the um the porn industry and all this stuff it's like that it's not just you It's not just you. Like there are people that are going to be adversely affected because of your compromise privately. Well, I'm just smoking weed by myself. No one knows. Okay, well, I smelt it on you. It wasn't the balloons. Just kidding. Um, Teenage, hashtag teenage story. Uh, My grandma. Okay. Um, Like I'm just doing it alone. Like it's by myself. Y'all, but you're not alone. You're yielding to a spirit of darkness. Well, weed is, is legal. Okay, well, you know, there's a lot of things that are legal, but that doesn't make them right. Do you understand? Like altering your mind and, and doing those things. Well, I'm just looking at porn by myself. You know, it's, the, it's a way, I, but you're not looking, you're yielding to a spirit of darkness. Like you have to know every time you go in your room tonight, when you go in your bedroom, you close your door. You have to know. There are two spirits waiting for me. Not like there's like a demonic force, <laughs> like Uriah's picture of the devil. <laughs> The devil has no power over you. But the spirit of darkness is like the Bible says, like he's seeking whom he may devour. Okay, so you have to know, like, I'm not by myself right now. And whatever door I, door I open, a door to darkness or a door to light, I'm going to see the, the effects of that publicly. And it's not just going to affect me. My private life doesn't just affect me. It affects everybody around me. It affects my, my late night crew. It affects my generation. It affects my church. It affects the the youth that go to my church. It affects the kids that go to my church. It affects the married people that go to my church. 
Do you realize that? Like where you are right now, like your life affects every, like we're a body. Just like whenever your toe is, is stubbed or like when Pastor Charity wears her metal, metal retainer, whenever we told her don't wear the metal retainer, but she did. She wore the metal retainer and then she gets a sore in her mouth. And I'll think she's talking like this, you know. It's just like that one little sore is affecting everything else. And she, she really does talk like this when she has a sore. <laughs> did it sound like that during youth or no? You made it through. Oh, praise God. <laughs> what do you do behind closed doors? It affects. Like we're a body. So like one person is funky private. It's like everyone else is affected. That's why we have to determine, like, okay, I'm going to do this thing. Like, I'm going to live my life for God, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close the door to any darkness and open the door to all the light so that not only I go to another level, level financial, physical, um, relational, but, like, the people I'm attached to go to another level. Like, the late night crew goes to another level. My generation goes to another level. My church, do you know what I mean? Like, Everything has to do with everything else. Do you know what I mean? Like this is where we are. And so we have to decide what am I doing private? And if I compromise privately and just make these allowances for the flesh, even though you might think, well, it's not that big of a deal or, you know, I I don't think it's that bad. Y'all, what the world says isn't bad doesn't matter. What does God say? You know, the world says, like, okay, well, this, this movie's rated this. But if the movie's PG and it's, you know, like, I don't need it. We have a check about it. You don't just watch it just because it's PG. Well, it's just PG. It's not going to be that big. But if you have a check, when you go against the Holy Spirit, and if you're like, well, I don't know what the Holy Spirit's saying. Well, then you start with the word. If you go against the word, the written word, that is compromise. And so James 4, 17, it says this. Therefore, to him that knows to do good and doesn't, to him it is sin. Romans 6, 38, you can write that next to that scripture in the Bible. The wages of sin is death. So compromise equals sin. Okay? You can't, you can't like, if you know to read your Bible every day and you don't, then what is that? Yo, that's sin. If you know to spend time in worship every day and you don't, what is that? That's sin. Period. Period. Y'all, God knows your schedule. And what's, you know, crazier is you know your schedule. And you know the time that you, like, waste. Well, I just didn't have time today. Bro, your YouTube thing, history has, like, an hour of shorts. Have y'all ever fallen asleep watching a short? I have. And then I wake up and it's like still playing shorts. And I'm like, dear God, this YouTube thing just keeps going and going and going. Like it doesn't turn off. Is there a setting you can turn off on your phone? I need to do that. But you know what I mean? It's like you have time. You have time, but you're just compromising. And you have to call the compromise what it is. It's sin. And if you're yielding to a spirit of darkness privately, it's going to show up publicly. And what is it going to be? What do you become? No matter how long you've been in it. Okay, no matter how long you've heard the word, like you could quote the whole Bible, but if you compromise private, it will be translated publicly as casual and charismatic. I want us to take a look at this video clip of Saul from the Old Testament, not Saul that turned to Paul, but Saul that stayed Saul. Saul that was chosen by God to be king. The children of Israel were crying out for a king. So Samuel anointed Saul to be king. And so I want us to look at the compromise that began to happen in his life. Destroy the Amalekites, completely Saul. Men, women, children, cattle, everything. Why is this man still alive? Why have his cattle been spared? My men are hungry. They need meat. A gog is worth more to me alive than dead. Trust me, Samuel, it's for the best. There's like so much in that one clip. But the first thing that Saul did was Samuel had instructed him to do what? To wait. Wait in Gilgal. Right? Stay. Did you say stay? Oh, what did you say? Oh, the next one. Okay, first one. That's fine. We'll come back to you. The first thing he said was just wait wait in Gilgal, I'll be back in seven days, and then I'll give you your next instructions. 
So whenever Saul heard that, whenever you hear the word of God, like you have to hold on to that word until you hear something else. So he compromised internally way before he compromised externally. In the private moments of his life, he began to be very impatient. And so he had decided, well, what can I do here? Well, if he won't speak to God for me, I'll speak to God myself. So now, even though he's doing something spiritual, that wasn't what he was told to do. And this is what compromise privately will cause you to do. You become very casual with your relationship with God. And you throw it around like it's a Band-Aid, or you throw it around like it's a fix, or you just like throw it around like you're hyper-spiritual, like you say all these spiritual things. When you're compromising privately, you become casual publicly. Y'all, he literally made a sacrifice, and he was not told to make a sacrifice. Sacrifices were spiritual, right? Like that's something spiritual that they did, but that's not what he was told to do. So I have to realize that privately, I can't even compromise like internally, like, if this is the word of God, then I have to determine this is the standard that I'm going to live by. I'm not going to make allowances even internally. Well, whenever I get here, then I'll probably do this. Or whenever I get this age, I'll probably do that. Or whenever I get this amount of money. You have to hold on to the word of God and say, like, Saul would have been safer if he would have just, like, even if he had to wait for seven years. Well, but he said seven days. Okay, well, you don't know his timetable. I don't know Samuel's timetable. He said seven days, but that's what he told me to wait. And so I'm just going to wait. Because what happens when you compromise privately, you become casual or charismatic publicly, period. And so that was the first fail was Saul did that. And so then God and his grace and his, like, he's so good. Like, God is so good. Like, he's so faithful, and like, he wants you to win. Like, God wants you to win so bad, but he can't do it for you. And so if you don't address the private things in your life, then just like Saul, like, what you could have walked into, you never walk into. And so then the next one, Samuel came to him and said, okay, well, this is what you need to do. You need to go and destroy the Amalekites. And he said, everyone, right? He was like, <laughs> Everyone saw, you know, like when a leader's told you, okay, do it this way. Like, you got to do it this way and do it every, women, children, animals, everybody. Everyone needs to be destroyed. And so then he's riding through and it's like, like the best music ever, like soundtrack is awesome for that time. And so he's like walking through and then he sees the king. And what does Saul say? Little charismatic Saul. It's for the best. It's for the best. Like, now you know. Now you know more. When people act like they know more, what are they doing privately? They're compromising privately. When you compromise privately, you become very casual, just throwing around the things of God, not treating it seriously, just showing up, doing the spiritual thing. Why? Because you're, com you're going against something, and it's going to show up. You can't hide from the conviction, the standard that you've either set for yourself, even if you're like, well, you know, I never told anybody that, that's that conviction or I never told anybody. If the Spirit of God told you, like, it's yours. Even if nobody else heard it or you never busted yourself, like, it's yours. And if you're not doing it, you're compromising, and it's going to show up. You'll be casual or charismatic. And so Saul, then he takes on, then pride steps in. So he thinks, you know, I can handle this. I've got it. So then Samuel's ticked. You know, like ticked. You know what the Bible says? Like, um, do what you do so that you, you bring your pastor's joy. Well, what is that? Don't compromise. Y'all, we're all attached. And if this is your house, like, we're all attached. Do you know what I mean? Like, anyways, so he, he goes, Samuel goes back, and God's like, I repent for picking him. He's turned against me. And so Samuel goes, and just like, even when Saul, when he shows up, and what does Saul say? Greetings. Like, you just walk around like you didn't do anything wrong. You walk around like everything's good. Bro, it's not good. So stop acting like it. Well, am I supposed to walk around all somber? You're supposed to be humble and not be a freaking faker. Like, just say, hey, I knew I was supposed to do this in, in private, or I knew I was supposed to uphold this standard, and I haven't been doing it. And either say, like, I'm not there yet, or I need help, I need accountability. But don't walk around like Saul, like, just acting like things are good. 
You know, just like grinding through and pushing through. Like that's not how it's supposed to be. There should be a flow. And there's not going to be a flow if you're not humble. And so he's, he's privately, he's just compromising. He's not doing what's right. He's, now he's eating with the guy he was supposed to kill. And so then Samuel's like, okay, I've got to do what you were supposed to do because Samuel still answered to God. So he kills him. And then what does Saul say? You've gone too far. No, I haven't gone far enough. You've gone too far. And then now you're mad at your leaders. You compromised and you tried to fake it or you just tried to fly under the radar. And now you're mad at your leaders. It just becomes super twisted. Do you understand? Like, why are you mad at the leader that literally anointed you, gave you a place because you're unwilling to address the things privately. Well, there's just a lot private. We'll just start now. Start a little bit at a time. I've been compromising here. I've been compromising here. Like, make a list. Go home and make a list and start addressing them. Get accountability. You have an amazing pastor. Pastor Greg, pastor. You have amazing pastors. What are you actually doing? Like, literally, what are you actually doing with your life? Just showing up? Y'all, because being casual and being charismatic, it doesn't end good. Do you know what happened to Saul? Saul ended up, obviously, the crown was stripped away. And every battle he went into, it was just like struggle after struggle after struggle. Because the Spirit of God has left him, he eventually went to a witch. Like, he got involved in Satanism. Okay, like, Saul summoned a witch. Okay, like, he went totally the other direction. Well, how does that, y'all, just that one compromise. And it wasn't even like a loud, blatant compromise. It was just internal. Like, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. I don't want to flee youthful lust. I don't want to not look at porn. I don't want to not date. I don't want to not, you know, I don't want to do two years internship. I don't want it. Little internal. And guess what? Yo, <laughs> then he starts calling for a witch. And then he watches his son in the final battle that he was ever in. He watches his sons be murdered. And he tells his servant, just kill me. They wouldn't even kill him. He was like, just kill me. And the servant was like, I'm not killing you. And so he literally fell on his own sword. He killed himself. All because of what? Because you couldn't wait for seven, seven freaking days. Like, did you notice? He's killing the cow, sacrifice, and then Samuel shows up. Well, you didn't give me the specific time, and so I thought you weren't coming. You hold on to whatever word it is. If it's seven times, seven times, seven, if it keeps going on. Until you get another word, you hold on to that word. Do you know what I mean? But compromise, what will compromise do privately? It will set you up. You'll become casual. You'll become charismatic. And then, like, it just doesn't end good. Y'all, what you do privately is translated publicly. And you're either translating publicly light or darkness. Everything that you do and everything that you say. There's a root to frustration, and that's fear. There's a root to that. There's a root to being flighty all over the place, like looking for this and trying to go here, this place has more money and, and we gotta move here because they have more money. There's, there's a root to that. These things don't just like pop up. You have been made in the image of God. It's because privately you're yielding to greed. Well, where does this, you know, all of this, no endurance, what else? Whenever I'm yielding to lust, whenever I'm um, lost, where's lost? Like, why am I not seeing a harvest? Like, where, why are my friends, like, I don't even have, like, a friend for longer than a month. Why is there such loss in my life? Well, because privately, I'm yielding to lust. Everything in my life that is contrary to the word of God, there's a root in the spirit of darkness. And I have to be willing to address wherever I've opened the door and judge it as wrong. That's what you do. Well, how do I fix it? You first John 1, 9 it. Confess your sins, and he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's how you deal with it. And then guess what? You stop. You head in the other direction. You stop doing that. Well, it's just, it's a, it's a habit now. Okay, well, you get new habits. And you get someone in the corner with you. You get someone in the, well, I'm embarrassed. Okay, well, you'll be embarrassed, and you'll have loss, and you'll be flighty, and you'll, you know, people will be dying around you. Like, that's what happens. I think I would rather just be embarrassed. Do you know what I mean? Then like bringing all of this negative energy and all this negative stuff to everything that I touch, I would rather just like face it and deal with it and then move forward. 
So we just got through four. Praise God. Those are the four. I'm going to stop because I don't want to keep y'all. It's almost 11 o'clock. But I just want to encourage y'all. We're going to get through the other ones next week, if that's okay with Pastor Greg. Or he could take the wheel. It's only three more, right? Three more. Undisciplined and then the good ones. A disciplined and consecrated. So we're going to get through those um, next week. But I want to encourage you again tonight or tomorrow, get before the Father and ask him, where have I yielded to compromise or to fear? Fear of man, fear of missing out, fear of not having enough, even fears that maybe have been perpetrated on you by maybe your parents. You know, sometimes it's like things that parents have said, like, well, we can't afford that. Well, that creates fear. You'll never be able to have that. That creates fear. So even fears that maybe people have said over you, you need to allow the Holy Spirit to show you those things, even write them down and say, okay, I'm not going to have this fear. For fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7, I'm not going to do that. For compromise, um, James 4, 17, like I know to do this, and so I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. Or I know not to do this, I'm not going to do it. In Romans 6, uh, 28, right? 3, 28. How many? 628. 638. What the heck? 623. I probably said it wrong. But thank you. Everybody help me. People help the people. <laughs> Look at it. In Romans, where it says the wages of sin is death. Right? I write those things down and I determine, like, this isn't going to be me anymore. I'm not going to be a person of fear privately and I'm not going to be a person of compromise privately and get accountability. Okay? We don't, we don't have to fight alone. Okay? Even whenever Saul's son was like, just wait. And he didn't listen. It's just like, gosh, if you would have just listened. And you didn't listen to him. And then you watched him die because of your sin. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's just your son and he's sticking with you. And you took his life. You know what I mean? It's just like unnecessary loss happens whenever you allow things privately that you don't need to have privately. So I'm going to pray.